Well, good morning and welcome to the AM News. Our very first story, suspect in the murder of a young lady at Pakoso in Kumase has been linked to the death of two other women whose bodies were found in the area earlier this year. Nana Bonsu is believed to have lured his victims, mainly commercial sex workers, to his hideout and succeeded in robbing and in some cases killing them. Love FM's Erastus Asaridonko was in the Pakoso community two days after the incident and in our reports. The Pakoso town is shaken by the gruesome murder of a 27-year-old mother of two. These two carpenters got wind of the crime, chased down the suspect and arrested him. No, she was screaming, ah, 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 and I saw the young man throwing bricks at something three times. For a moment, I thought it was a snake until I saw his clothes soaked in blood. We rushed in, chased him, and arrested him. The victim was later identified as Samira Farouk and a mother of two. Omar Farouk is her father. I don't know. I mean, hospital. There are conflicting reports on the condition of the suspect, whether dead or alive. If this were to be a lawless state, we would have lynched him as well. But we have laws, and I want justice. As her friends seek justice for her, residents of Pakoso, where she was killed, want a probe into the death of other women whose bodies were found under a canopy of trees a few meters from the suspect's home. Two months ago, I found the papers in a coy. The name of Pakura, I followed the name of. Barely two months ago, a body was picked from that forest. We hear stories of women being stabbed and killed here. He's a criminal, and with his latest act, we believe he's behind these killings. We are scared. You can't use this road after 6 p.m. He robs people of their belongings on this road, close to the forest. He was arrested once and given some hot slaps. If he is the one behind these crimes, then it's a bad thing. Now we are told that all the bodies found in this canopy of thick trees were women. I have with me here uh, somebody who has stayed here for some time and has been part of the local watchdog committee. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, Jumano, Abuwa community, no. And it's a multi me my S N B E E now we need to need to think team. Am I a tag any buyer? We should have a watchdog committee to improve security here. If only authorities will register and give us ID cards. We are volunteering. We are ready to work to boost security here. But without the ID cards, we can't work. Suspect is still in police custody as investigations continue. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Pakoso, Ashanti region. 
Now, in the face of COVID-19, many countries have been forced to go paperless, especially the health sector. But can we say life in the health sector has become easy in the advent of electronic health or e-health? A study in Ghana has found individuals in the private sector are more likely to adopt the concept of e-health than government institutions. On Tech Thursday, Joy News' medical reporter Dr. Neta Pasram has been finding out more. E-health is defined as the use of technologies, education and data to support point of care clinical services operated by clinical teams as well as patients in order to support self-management. This method of seeking advice and managing patients has its pros and cons, especially in developing countries. The study sought to identify factors that were influencing the adoption of electronic health in Ghana. The investigation, which involved 1,640 people, found individuals in the private sector are more likely to adopt the concept of e-health than government institutions. The study also found tertiary or referral facilities and people of younger age groups tend to appreciate and grasp the concept of e-health better than the older generation. Again, being female and having a higher education play a major role in the adoption of e-health devices among health professionals or managers. Ajina Kesitechi of the University of Ghana is lead researcher. It was found in the study that most of the professional characteristics that influence e-health adoption have a low to moderate influence on actual, actual adoption. In fact, specifically, the study found out that professional factors such as being a female, being young, and having a higher education, and having spent several years in the professional role were significant in influencing the adoption of e-health devices and systems among healthcare professionals and managers. The researchers recommended that the main health body of Ghana, Ministry of Health, should put in place systems and measures to ensure continuum of care for patients, even on the e-health. They should also enact laws to enroll our e-health into our public and private sectors and also incorporate the use of ICT-related health staff in the tertiary institutions. In this case, the gender of the healthcare provider, the age of the healthcare provider, the number of years he has worked, and uh, as to whether he's working in a private institution or not. These are factors that need to be taken into consideration before any adoption could be instituted that can work or is successful. Dr. Netta Pastrum reporting for Joy News. So the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly is forming a road safety advisory group which will include a variety of stakeholders in the fight against road accidents. Metropolitan Chief Executive Samuel Pine says this is part of efforts the Assembly is making to improve safety in Kumasi. He spoke at the launch of the first ever KMA Road Safety Report 2020 in Kumasi. A total of 577 persons were killed in road crashes between January and November this year in the Ashanti region. The figure indicates a 16% increase over 2020s, which stood at 496. These actions, if implemented effectively, will help to improve safety on Kumasi's roads. Findings from this report will inform continuous interventions to reduce crash-related deaths and injuries in the city, guiding the activities of stakeholders in road safety to deliver on their mandate. I expect the contributions at the city level will supplement national efforts, prioritize road safety. I hope that the strategic action taken by KMA to reduce road deaths and injuries will encourage stakeholders at this local and national level to continue supporting these efforts. As we like this report, I urge all governmental and non-governmental stakeholders, institutions, and everyone concerned with real safety in the city to use this report 
to guide the ongoing development, implementation, and evaluation of road safety action at the city and municipal level. The report is part of road safety reports launched in 30 cities in the world by the Bloomberg Philanthropist. Ghana was selected as one of the 15 beneficiary countries. The report enlightens stakeholders on the magnitude and risk of road traffic deaths and injuries. It also seeks to improve city vehicular management and also inform the best aids to mitigate the crisis. Mrs. Claudia Timpapo is a Road Injury Surveillance Coordinator, KMA, Bloomberg Philanthropist Initiative for Global Road Safety. Collisions and head-on collisions constituted the highest number of fatalities. Again, we can see clearly that pedestrians are the ones that are bearing the brunt of these road deaths. Okay, that's a whole lot. <laughs> Compared to everything else, very staggering. When we look at deaths by road user and causal vehicle type, we can see that cars and pickups cause the highest number of pedestrian deaths, followed by buses and minibuses. So you see why um, I think um, ASP mentioned it, that it's not, just, it's not just education that should be for the buses and minibuses, but also for private vehicles, private drivers, because looking here, they kill more people than even the bus and minibuses. Reporter for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Meanwhile, the northern region has recorded 148 cases of road crashes from January to mid-December. 37 of these cases were fatalities, 45 life-threatening injuries, and 33 minor injuries. Northern Regional MTTD Commander Superintendent Mahmoud Youssef has been speaking with our correspondent, Martina Bugri. The Northern Regional MTTD Commander Superintendent Mashud Yusif, who shared this data with Joy News, said the region recorded a reduction in cases of accidents compared to last year. The department recorded a total of 148 cases. And with this uh, figure, we are looking at it from the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and a greater part of the last quarter. So for the first quarter, the department recorded a total of 11 fatal cases, then 17 serious cases, and 15 minor cases. This add up to 43 cases that were reported for the first quarter. Then the second quarter, we recorded 15 cases, uh, which were fatal, 17 serious, and another 17 minor that add up to 49. Then for the third quarter, we recorded 11 cases, 16 minor cases. I mean, the 11 were all fatal, then eight minor cases, and this is sum up to 35. Then for the last quarter of the, I mean, as I indicated, from the a greater part of the last quarter, we had uh, 49 fatal cases were recorded. 11 serious cases were re recorded and one minor case, and this also sum up to 21. Uh, from the records av available, the, there's a significant reduction in the road. Uh, well, in terms of the fatalities, there's a significant uh, reduction. But from my point of view, I still re regard that as not good enough. Even though the northern region recorded a reduction in cases of accidents, they are leaving no stone on 10 to ensure an accident-free unitide. As part of activities to reduce the carnage on the road, the Northern Regional Road Safety Authority has launched a campaign that stay alive as part of activities to reduce accidents in the area. Addressing the media at the launch, the manager for road safety for the Northern Region and Savannah regions, Mohamed Abdul summit said human error accounts for 90 percent of road crashes in the area we have human error constituting more than 90 percent of road traffic crashes rtcs the stay alive campaign adopts a human factor model 8fm which puts the human being at the center of the interaction the component that surrounds him or her 
in the road transport environment, that is the road and the vehicle. The truth is that road traffic, uh, road traffic crashes are man-made and not one accident. The Northern Regional Police Commander, COP Timothy Yosabunga, said there has been a collaborative effort with major stakeholders in the fight against traffic accidents, and that has yielded a lot of good results. If you will remember, or if you catch your mind back from a few months or weeks back, we had a team that came out to enforce some of the basic road regulations. We know we have a good number of motor riders in the region. And crash helmets has been one area that riders don't want to comply. And these three bodies came together to enforce it. And it has yielded a very positive result for the region. Now, cybersecurity advocate Cyber Ghana wants to hone the skills of senior high school students and their counterparts at the university to create jobs for them after school. The organization says this is the surest way to deal with the rising unemployment challenge. The organization has established cybersecurity laboratories in some universities and senior high schools to train and equip the students with skills for the job market. Richard Kojonyaku has more for us in this report. According to Cyber Ghana, they are training students from the country's senior high schools and the universities in the field of cyber security and emerging technologies, and this is being done to hone their skills for the job market. Already cyber security laboratories have been established in some of the country's senior high schools and the universities. Coordinator of Cyber Ghana, Bright Eduji, says the country could be better off with this approach to deal with the unemployment situation in the country. Research shows that um, out of the, the huge number of students that graduate each year from our universities, only 10% of them get jobs. So the question is what happens to the 90%? That is why we see that the unemployment rate is increasing. So Cyber Ghana deemed that we have to train our youths equip them with the necessary skills and prepare them for the job market. And in so doing, we'll cut down the unemployment rates in Ghana. Um, the support we give to these students is, is not um, only teaching them in school. So let's say you are a final year, in your, uh, final year student in SHS. Even when you finish school, you are still a member of the cyber club. So we follow you up to the university where you are going. So even in the uh, universities, we have the cyber club in some universities. So you as a member, when you were in SHS, still qualifies you to be a member even in the university. A lecturer at the computer science department, Paul Kobnahen, who took the student through the program, indicated the organization is seeking to fill the gaps that exist in the technology world. Um, I think it's, it's becoming hot kick uh, when it comes to um, the current state of the world now. Why? Because as I, as I listened, now every company is now looking for such people to employ. Um, we keep talking about um, job after school, um, job after school. This is one area that we as a country can really hit and hit so well that will open a lot of job opportunities for the students when um, they complete. So right from senior high school, they can be encouraged to take up such courses in the university level and on and on and they go. The organization says it does all of this training for the students without any charge because they want to develop as many skills as possible for the job market. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejenyako, Cape Coast. Well, that's it for AM News this morning. But of course, the AM show continues. And Elvis, um, Elton, sorry, will be crossing the road to join me for the news review. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>